Right then, you're here. Hi there. Today we are again going to talk about exploration. You'll recall that in Once Upon a Time, The Explorers, we went on the trail of the likes of Christopher Columbus, Humboldt, Bougainville, and many others. They all had a thirst for knowledge and overcame dangers to open up the worlds they discovered for the insatiable curiosity of man. Now then, among our explorers, there was a bizarre balloonist, an eccentric inventor who inspired Hergé to create the very absent-minded Professor Calculus in his Tintin novels. Oh, yes. That was August Picard. He went way up high in a balloon in 1931. Exactly. Then in 1960, his son Jacques Picard went 11,000 meters under sea aboard the Trieste in a vessel called a bathyscaphe, or deep water submarine. Today, in 2015, I'm asking we meet up regularly to follow his grandson's exploits. Bertrand Picard is getting ready to embark on an incredible adventure with the famous pilot André Borschberg. Every great explorer has their own mode of transport. Some of these have passed into posterity. Christopher Columbus and his Santa Maria. Charles Lindbergh and his Spirit of St. Louis. Jacques Cousteau and his Calypso. For their journey, pilots Bertrand Picard and André Borschberg will travel on Solar Impulse 2, a solar-powered plane that is capable of flying at night. As its name indicates, Solar Impulse works thanks to the sun. That's right, it uses solar energy, which once converted into electricity, powers the four electric motors the plane has. To capture this energy, more than 17,000 photovoltaic cells have been placed over all the surface of the wings. With a wingspan of 72 meters, Solar Impulse is wider than a Boeing 747. Ah, it's much easier for the plane to recharge its batteries in daytime than to find a parking place. So during the day, Solar Impulse uses direct sunlight to make its motors work and to recharge its approximately 663 kilos of lithium batteries. Then, by night, these famous batteries take over to keep those motors working until the following daybreak, when this whole cycle starts again. The plane can therefore fly almost indefinitely, and what's more, without polluting. This is one of the greatest benefits of this expedition. The cruising speed of the plane is only 80 kilometers per hour, and in order to reduce its energy consumption even further, it often glides. Another major challenge during the design and development of Solar Impulse was its weight. Obviously, the lighter the plane is, the less energy it needs to fly. <laughs> That's logical. So engineers have worked long and hard to create materials that were in fact so light that the entire plane weighs no more than the average family car. To reduce overall weight even further, it was decided there would only be space for one pilot, so our explorers will alternate in flying the plane. Built in Payerne in Switzerland, Solar Impulse was then dismantled and transported in sections by plane. Really? By plane? <laughs> That's right. It was flown out to Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates. This is the start point for the voyage, and so where the plane needed to be reassembled. It's a job of tremendous precision. But why Abu Dhabi, maestro? <laughs> ah, well, now that's another story.